Hello everyone and welcome to the third module of the DSM class. This week we will continue our exploration of the world of mental disorders. We will explore the following questions. First, how do we define an intellectual development disorder? Next, what is autism spectrum disorder? And finally, what do we mean by the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder? What language should we use when we talk about these disorders and what are the DSM diagnostic criteria for these mental health conditions? According to the World Health Organization, disability is a broad term that includes physical, psychological, intellectual and socio-emotional impairments. The language we use to describe disability is constantly evolving. The overall principle for using disability language is to make sure we treat all individuals as human beings. When you use person-first language you emphasize the person, and not his or her health condition. In the identity-first language, the person can claim disability and choose their identity, rather than allowing other people, such as researchers or educators, to select the term for it. The American Psychological Association Publication Manual, APA 7, describes that people with disabilities can choose to use identity-first language. Some people with disabilities may choose identity-first language to express their cultural pride. That language allows the use of the term, autistic person. While in the person-first language, the correct term would be, a person with autism. Both person-first and identity-first approaches are designed to respect disabled persons. APA 7 suggests that you can mix both terms, unless or until you know the approach that the group prefers. Then you can use the term preferred by people. The best approach is to seek guidance from self-advocacy groups. In direct practice, use the language your client uses to describe him or herself. When you work with a group of people that includes, for example, both people with spinal cord injury and people with autism, you should indicate the nature of disability of people who are present. Also, sometimes there will be people with different levels of spinal cord injury and different symptoms of autism spectrum disorder included in the same group. It might make sense then to mention such heterogeneity. We must avoid the language that uses pictorial metaphors or negativistic terms that imply restriction. For example, you should never use the terms wheelchair bound or confined to a wheelchair because these terms focus on the reduced functionality of the person. A better term to use would be wheelchair user. Also, avoid such negative terms as AIDS victim or brain damaged. Instead, say a person with AIDS and a person with traumatic brain injury. Also, stay away from the terms that can be regarded as slurs. Do not call people crippled, invalids, nuts, alcoholics, meth addicts. Instead, use the terms a person with a physical disability or a person with a mental illness. It is also problematic to use the terms high functioning or low functioning to describe people with developmental and intellectual disabilities instead describe the person's strengths and weaknesses finally avoid such euphemisms as special needs physically challenged and handicapable many people perceive these terms as patronizing and inappropriate this slide summarizes the problematic and preferred terminology used to describe disability 